uh, I want to start that we remain optimistic on the potential growth on the long term for Africa. You can see with the surge of the prospects uh, across the market, there's increase of travelers, increase of tourists. This is going to be bound with a surge of investment in the hotel. And as such, the entire industry is growing. I can highlight before talking about IAG itself, I would like to highlight three opportunities that are actually very interesting. And then we can see it across Africa. The first one is the diversity that of offering that Africa can offer that doesn't exist too much in other continent, whether in the nature, the culture, and everything in, in one continent. The second opportunity is there's improvement actually in infrastructure, infrastructure and connectivity. We can see now improvement in the airports, improvements in the roads, which is allowing to actually access to market that were untapped before and that will help us in improving and developing more and more hotel and connecting Africa itself internally and as well for the international tourist. And finally, there is an improvement as well in stability that is allowing the market to attract a little bit more and more capital. And there is a bit of flow of foreign investment. And you can see there's actually a rise in 2022, the total foreign investment reached a uh, record high. Again, you know, it's when you, when you talk about Africa uh, for the last 10 years attending this, this uh, event, a lot of people always think, or the world's trying to get FDIs into Africa that are after lower risk investments with high returns. But in reality, the investors in Africa are Africans. They understand the risk. They're okay with you know, a long-term sustainable uh, rate of return. So we're seeing more and more investors, uh, uh, local investors, uh, investing in the hospitality uh, uh, sector. In addition to this, the trend that we're seeing is you have the second generation or the younger generation that are after lifestyle hotels. These are well-traveled, they've, they've studied abroad, they've seen lifestyle hotels, they're open to different uh, uh, products as opposed to your traditional big box hotels. Um, so we're seeing a lot of our collection brands being in, in, in demand uh, across Africa uh, and, and again, when, when you talk about Africa, you know, from North Africa, from Egypt to Morocco to Cape Town and everything, or South Africa and everything in between, it's like a big melting pot of, of, of uh, uh, different investors and different goals uh, that, that people invest for. So um, we believe in Africa. As you said, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the Africans building the hotels. We've been in Congo for a century now. We understand how things work. We understand what we need, what people need in Congo. So. To answer your question, yes, we are looking at building more hotels. We signed in 2019 three Nov hotels, and between then and now, we signed another two hotels, um, Ibis Styles. Um, all of them will be opened by 2025, first quarter. So that's five hotels in five years. And um, just you know, just to give a background, Transcope Hotels PLC is um, Nigeria's leading hospitality brand. Um, we're listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and we recently just hosted um, 60 presidents and world leaders at the hotel in Abuja. It's a 677-room hotel, um, five-star hotel in Abuja. Um, so the market is ripe for so much more, and that's the truth. Um, you know, the, there's a death of hospitality inventory supply in Abuja and other cities across Nigeria. And just looking at the numbers that we showed early on, you know, just from pipeline to development, the extent of time that it takes to actually bring the hotels onto um, implementation is quite significant, ranging from issues of, you know, regula reg regulation, trying to get the documentation for the land, um, trying to get the developers, trying to get access to finance, long-term finance is also quite difficult as well. Um, but the market is ripe. I think there's huge opportunities really um, for local and for in international investors to actually partner um, with Nigerian investors to ensure that we can actually develop a lot more. In terms of the market, I think one of the key things that we've seen, and thankful to COVID actually, was the development of the domestic and leisure travel, which prior to now actually did not exist. For us in Nigeria, with the recent um, removal of subsidy, what we're, seeing, what we're going to see 
is that there's obviously disposable income is going to be quite limited. And so people are going to start to look more inwards to actually have be leisure, which is business and leisure in combination as well with events and um, you know, conference is actually ho holding in Nigeria. And the same thing, I think, across Africa as well. I mean, the challenge is going to depend country to country and especially across continent uh, as big as Africa. So there is no specific. However, the challenges remain pretty much similar to any other country. But, I, you know, you can name from the regulation to the uh, staff, resources, financing and all these so these factors sometimes do challenge uh, the development of the project and the time frame of it. However, if you are, we are to focus on the three common factors or challenges that you can see across the market in Africa, we can you know, talk about regulation, and which is normal because it's still under improvement. And as we improve and the market mature, these regulations are going to come. But you can name on, it starts with the ownership title, the use, the building permit, or the change of the regulation during actually the development. And these sometimes are causing a delay in the development and a lot of challenges. The second one is actually the shortage of uh, professional consultants or, or contractors. And actually, this is not only in Africa. We can see it as well somewhere in the Middle East and other countries uh, with the rise of uh, multiple market and what's happening after the COVID-19, which is very difficult to get these resources. And that affects not only the time, it affects as well the quality of the project. Uh, the third one is financing. Uh, again, with the global uh, financing, uh, attraction of capital is not that easy. Uh, lenders look at risks, uh, so it becomes harder. I don't think this is only now related to Africa. It's a global thing. However, it makes it sometimes more challenging in certain countries, depending on the, uh, on the project. This being said, I think the importance is to see how you unlock these hurdles and how you do it from the, from the beginning. Uh, in IEG, we try to be working close to the owner. So since the inception of the project, when we are even doing the pitches, so we, we start taking the owner through that development process. And we like to work closely with them to ensure that we put these phases, as you said, because it will impact your feasibility study, it will impact all these. And we actually bring our design and engineering team to lay out the roadmap to ensure that we make sure that there is no hurdle or at least we account for it during the development process. And we've been successful. I think, I think last year we just opened five hotels, all of them were on time. Uh, and uh, as planned with, with, with the normal delays. But I wouldn't say that these challenges are only associated with Africa. It's pretty much a global thing. It's just the level of these challenges differ. Okay. Um, Shadi, um, you know, Charvel mentioned a bit on the support uh, that operators give to developers. In this region, a lot of developers, because it's still a developing market in terms of hospitality assets, a lot of developers are first-time developers and might not have the experience that Marriott or IG might have with thousands of hotels, uh, obviously not as immediate developers, but going through that process with other developers. So what kind of support can local developers get from big operators, if there is any support? I, I, think, I think operators in general, and that's how we approach our, our owners and our developers, it's, it's a partnership. You know, yes, we've got over 8,500 hotels globally, and, and we have worked with developers, first-time developers, and developers that have built a lot of hotels. In, in Africa, and I'll go back to, to Dupay's point on, a hotel can take four to six years to develop. Another hotel, will, like for example, our Four Points at Nairobi Airport was built in 24 months. And again, it's, the way we can help our, our, our future owners and our, and our developers is, is, is multiple fronts. The first one would be putting them on the right track from a, from a project time frame, from a project timeline. Do the right steps in the beginning. Have you done your financial feasibility study? Um, I think part of the challenges which um, you know, have been addressed, and I think my, my colleague um, Funke talked about it early on, which is, you know, being able to take your funds outside of Nigeria once you've actually invested. And we're quite optimistic that these changes are going to really encourage foreign, foreign investors um, to come and invest in Nigeria because it will be simpler going forward.